Hello and welcome again um, to our food storage club. I am Lonnie Ray Williams, president of the Independent American Patriots, and thank you for joining us. Um, we'll be going through a food storage class that uh, my wife and I put together several years ago, um, but it's important giving, uh, given our current world situation to go over it. We've had a lot of individuals talk to us about food, uh, food storage, ask us about it, and we figured it'd be great to put it out there for our members, and in this case, uh, to the rest of the world. Start sharing our screen here. All righty. All right. First off, um, I'm going to try and change your mind on how you look about food storage. Um, it seems like a really daunting task right now. If you just simply say, "Gee, how how were I? How would I come up with with two years of food, and and how could I, you know, just live off of that?" And I'm here to show you um, how you can you can take take that in some small steps and make it very achievable. So first off, let's let's try and change your mind on on how you look at things. Consider that you're you're a business, you're an inn, you're a bed and breakfast, you are a small establishment. And you have a regular set of customers that are there every single day. And they go through a certain amount of supplies every single day, not just food. And so in the process of this, we're going to invite you to ask about how much food is it going to be necessary to keep your, your establishment open? What types of food are regularly available and, and can, can be supplied to your customer base and that they'll enjoy and eat? Uh, how are you going to make the food? And of course, how are you going to to stock the food? Where is it going to come from? But also, how are you going to store the food? These are some things that I'm going to invite you to, to think about as, as we continue down our journey. Now, first off, you're the boss. You have a, a home dining establishment where you expect to be able to serve up, you know, three meals a day and to the average number of customers um, for quite a while. You know that the supply disruptions are prevalent and prices are only going to up from here. You have some regular customers and those who may find their way there. It's time to make a few business decisions. And this is how we're gonna go ahead and approach this concept. But before we, we continue on this and before we go down the path on any of our meetings, um, we, we start our meetings with a we prayer and a pledge of allegiance. And with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few moments here to, to offer up a prayer and then I'll ask uh, Leslie, our executive secretary, uh, to go ahead and um, put on a, a Pledge of Allegiance for us. Our dear kind Father in heaven, we are thankful for the opportunity to come together and to spread the word um, to, to try and help people to prepare for challenging times again. And we invite you to be here with us to open the hearts and minds of those available, not only here watching live, but those who are in need of this message. Please carry that message to those in need. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, Leslie, would you like to um, let me get out of there? Stop sharing. And... All right, sharing should be on. We'll be recording the uh, meeting here and uh, keeping it uh, so that other members can uh, view it as well. Nope, nope. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United of States, United States of, America, of America and to and the republic, to the republic for, which it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. All right. Thank you very much. All 
All right, back to our lesson. Um, sometimes when we look at, at challenging situations from different perspectives, it helps open up our minds to possibilities, and that's what we're going to do tonight. And just understand that if you look at this from trying to maintain a business and keep it open, it's a little bit easier than, than looking at it from, oh, my gosh, if I don't do this, um, you know, terrible things are going to happen if, if I don't have food to feed my family. Our goal is to to try and keep you out of the the freak out zone and just approach things through a calm and collective uh, manner that we know um, can be done even in difficult times. So the first thing to understand is that you are already open. You um, you're already feeding these these customer base. Uh, the, the only thing that's going to change is times are going to change. And we already know that they're already changing and your business model needs to change to keep up with that. So food storage, it provides a bridge to transition. Um, the average human being takes two years to completely change their life. And what I mean by that is if you are in a technological society and you're dropped off in the 1800s, it would take you two years to, to adapt to that lifestyle, um, vice versa. So whenever you're going from a completely one type of life to another, it takes you two years to adjust to your new norms. So food storage just provides a bridge to the other side. Um, so your current establishment, if you look at it, looks like a nice fancy diner. You have your friends over, your neighbors over at any point in time. You don't worry too much about it. Things are expensive, sure. But we can go to the grocery stores and we can keep it open. But your future establishment is going to look a little bit different. You might not have a big diner sign on the outside. You might not want to you know, make it look very inviting for, for various reasons. But your store, nonetheless, is going to stay open. And despite what it may look like and whether you have availability to electricity or not, and, and those sort of situations may change, but through it all, you want to make sure that your establishment stays open. So how we cook and how we do things may change because the world is going to change. But if you have a, a plan to make it through that transition, um, you're going to be way more successful than, than anybody who, who obviously hasn't planned at all. Now, our program is based on a, a a food storage book or a compendium, and it's several food storage programs, many, is fa in fact, that are all put together under multiple tabs. Now, for those members who have um, registered for this class and um, wanted to participate in this class, through the email that you registered, um, we are going to be sending you the digital compendium access to all of these um, so that you just have those. Now, we also will have an option uh, that we can print a book, uh, assemble a book um, for a price, and I don't have that in front of me, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, we'll get to that in the program. But so we have an option that we are going to print the book and make it available for members. We, we don't we can't offer that to the general public because it's it's just such a huge thing, but we will do it to members of our organization. Um and then for the second class, which is a deep dive into this entire book, that is close to members. Um, but so for those members listening here, um, that's where we're going to be able to go into that book um, on a more in-depth basis with you. We're going to highlight a lot of things and, and teach you. Even if you don't have it, you're going to learn something tonight. But just so for those who are, are going down this program and want to get heavily involved and learn more, um, we're going to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time together and availability to uh, personalize your food storage and help you out there. Um, but these are just some of the programs that are available in that book. And um, so I will be highlighting the, some aspects of food storage tonight. So let's consider who your customers are and, and understand that the way life is now is, is not the way that life happens in an emergency. We can see in a hurricane area where your neighbor's house might be completely wiped out and they need to stay for a little while. They don't mind helping out and 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 taking care of the chores just like everybody else. Um, but they're going to be traumatized and their capacity to do things might be diminished than other people. But it might be helpful for them to stay busy and to stay focused and, and you know, that picking up with daily chores and, and cooking and, and different things like that might help 
keep them focused on on important things and and providing them access to do things to uh, file insurance claims and whatnot it, it all depends on your circumstance it, we may find a certain situation where there there's civil unrest and the supply range lines completely collapse or a great depression era um financial collapse to where nobody can afford anything and and the supply lines are all but non-existent so with that in mind you know your customers first and foremost are are the tavern keepers you you know your family needs to eat um it, it's your land your preparedness you need to make sure that you have plenty of food um the foods that your family will eat and like to to thrive for um the foreseeable future now who else might come in you know those live in live and help the neighbors um also, you might have bartering travelers or those just passing through delivering supplies to help out. Um, you know, what can you trade to go back and forth to help your situation and help their situation? It's all about mutual aid. Um, there, you know, depending on how long uh, the situation is, you might have, you know, caravans or seasonal mi mi migration. Uh, supply lines may eventually be established. These are all things that depending on on how long the situation uh, or emergency lasts, um, you need to be prepared for. Excuse me. One of the things to consider, excuse me. One of the things to consider is to, to leave room at the end. You know, you never know who's, who's going to be coming and you never have the mentality that you're going to go at it alone because nobody can survive alone, but you have to be picky and choosy as far as who you're going to, allow on your property or where you're going to allow them. There might be staging grounds the where you have a campground to where people can stay for a little while, but you don't let them into your house. You know, there, there's certain things that you want to consider, but consider a wide variety of people who may or may not be eating at your, at your inn. So let's take a 50,000 foot look at food storage for a moment. And, and let's take a look at just some basic things for all food storage programs, no matter what. First, stock up on foods that you and your family eat. There's, there's a mentality among some people that they're going to buy, you know, dehydrated packets, you know, one month packets from different companies and, and don't, don't, you know, I'm not trying to knock them because there's a place for that type of storage. But if you've never eaten that type of food, dehydrated food that needs to be reconstituted and put together, and you go from your current lifestyle suddenly into that for six months to three months at, at a time without some sort of transition, your system may rebel. Um, your family may rebel. Um, you yourself may find that you just don't want to eat what you have because you're craving something that, that you know you went cold turkey on. So stock up on foods that you eat. It's going to be critically important. And, and if you can't store the foods that you eat, you, you seriously might want to consider changing your diet to be able to store foods. Um, otherwise, you you just take away the ability to be um, prepared. McDonald's does not last that long in the freezer, I don't think. Um, eventually, all the food that you eat may be obtained solely through growing, foraging, or bartering through it. So having a, any evolving plan or, or something long-term is important. Uh, have a plan to increase your home production and, and community trade. Can you make candles? Do you have a trade that would be important during a, a, an extended situation? These are, are factors to consider. And, you know, maybe you want to buy candle making supplies, or maybe you want to buy knife sharpening supplies, or, you know, what whatever it is that you may be good at or, or have um, skills in that may be needed ensure that you have those built into your preparations have a plan to secure your family and your food from mammon and beast alike when people get desperate and they get hungry um, they do crazy stupid things and remember the most important thing and aspect to remember is that you cannot feed everybody uh, there's going to be a vast amount of, of individuals that are not um, prepared for any sort of disaster in any situation. And even some who are prepared may lose everything. And there's going to be some really desperate people. And if you if you open up your 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 personal storage to, to 5,000 people, you suddenly will not have any storage and you'll be just as hungry as everybody else. So consider that 
that you may want to feed everybody, but a, a mob mentality may swarm you and you need to be careful on, on your preparations on who you help and who you don't. So first off in our, in our book, we have three programs um, that are quick start programs. And there's a lot of different quick start programs out there in the food storage planning, but I'm, I'm going to cover um, three basic different types. Um, number one, um, there was an individual out there called the the green prepper that, that had a, a, a 52 supply in, in two weeks. And what I'm going to do, let me get really quickly and see if I can cover this program. Well, I'm not going to be able to, to share that screen right now, but so I will be able to, re um, I'll read the program. Basically the, the 52 week program. Works like this. You, for each week of 52, you, you have a list like week one, you buy 11 cans of Vienna sausage week two, you buy five pounds of pasta week three, you get six cans of pasta sauce week four is 20 pounds of sugar. Week five is 10 pounds of flour. Week six is 10 pounds of powdered milk. And then week seven is, is six pounds of yeast. So essentially what you're doing is you're developing a, a, a you have a list that is for one, one person's food or five person food for, for one year. And, and you have a complete list and you break it down into 52 weeks. Now it used to be when this program was developed about 10 years ago, you could, you could spend five dollars a week and and get a a one year supply for one person um, over fifty two weeks. Now the way it is now with the food supply and inflation, you're probably looking at spending seven dollars and fifty cents uh, a week or ten dollars a week uh, to to obtain a one year's plan um, just by a weekly build to. It's a good way to work um, as we have a good list to work from and break it down into easily achievable blocks. And this is considered block prepping. It is pretty bare bones in that it, it, it considers your yearly calories without a lot of variety. It can be easily scaled up in time and amount, um, but keep inflation in mind that it, throughout all of these programs, as a matter of fact, that whatever you buy now is always going to be more expensive in, in a few days, weeks, or months. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is how happy would you be if this is all you had to live for in, in one year. And one of the limitations of a program with just the list shopping is it assumes a couple of things. It assumes that you know what you're going to do with all of these ingredients. Um, and and this, this, this happens in a couple plans. Um, the third plan I, I'll talk about is the same thing. And it also... Um, you know, expects you to not have a lot of wastage or anything to meet those um, basic calorie needs. One of the other in challenges that you're going to have is that with these um, with these programs, there's not a lot of variety. And so over a period of time, you're going to get burned out on the same things. Um, to combat this, there's a different program, and I'll get into that next. It's called a three-month supply in three weeks. And one of, one of the cool things I like about this is you have different West recipe cards. Um, and these recipe cards will will create different things. So, for example, in in, in the recipe cards that I have, um, like week one, you get spaghetti dinner for four. And that's eight ounces of spaghetti noodles and 26 ounces of spaghetti sauce with meat. And... And you have the whole recipe on what you do with it and how much, how many cans of everything to make it. And with this, you know, you have a couple of extra things, two gallons of water, two toothbrushes, maybe some deodorant, things like that. The end of this list. And then the next week you go into a different recipe and, and that one, uh, that recipe could be like a tuna, tuna noodle casserole first, you know, serves four to six. And then the, the recipe can go in and then that you gather that. But what you do is when you go buy that one week, you're, you're buying for 12 meals, 
So 12 meals worth of material when you go buy the stuff for the one. So that each week you're buying a 12 meal supply. And the more recipes that you add into this is you always have a, a you know 12 meal supply of those recipes. And this way you're building your your food storage by meals that you know that you're going to eat. I like this system. It's very flexible for the individual and it gives you a different way to build too. Um, you can cover breakfast, lunch, dinner. You can you can tailor this if there's some items on sale at your local store. You can develop some recipes that would take advantage of that and then uh, do a build too for that. So there's a lot of flex flexibility in this system. The last uh, quick start program I'm going to to get to is a one year one year supply using a build to plan. There's lots of them out there, and they they essentially say here is a list that one person would need. Um, for a, a year to uh, to survive. And, and a lot of these are based on your calories, how many calories you're going to need, how much uh, fat, or, um, and not a lot of consideration is given into the, the vitamin balance in some cases. So make sure that you have some vitamin supplements or things like that to to take to just make sure that you're, you're maintaining balance uh, in case some of these lists are a little bit off. Um, <clears throat> But they are, it is a good way to say, look, I need some food supply and I I don't have a clue and here's a list. But just keep in mind and look at these lists. Do you know how to prepare everything? You know, would you would you be able to take 20 boxes of spaghetti noodles and, and some sauce and just automatically know that it, what to do with it? Some people do. But if you've been living out of a box for a long time or restaurants, then you may not have some concepts and we may need to pick up some skills that we haven't used for a while. Um, you want to, so, honey? Do you want to share the uh, the PowerPoint again? Oh yes, sorry, I thought I was. There we are. Okay, so I've just I've covered the one year supply in fifty two weeks, a uh, quick start program, a three month supply in twelve weeks, and then a one year supply um, using a build to plan. Next, I'm going to cover a, a a program called, and again, you guys will receive digital PDS for those who signed up, and for those looking to um, to join up, just go ahead and head over to independentamericanpatriots.org and sign up, and there you'll be able to find the access and information to um, where you can where you can get in touch with us and how we can help you out here. Um, so. <clears throat> The small bases, small spaces and small budgets program. And again, you can look for many of these online and you might be able to find them. They've been around for a long time. The small spaces and small budgets um, food storage plan was built by a concerned mom. And I like this program because it, it's a common sense approach. I think I had to move on. Yeah, common sense approach for stockpiling for assumes a family of four right off the back two two adults, two children. Um, it can be easily expandable. You know, the more children you have or the more adults you have. Um, and it, it's pretty compact. It's a great way to start out if you have nothing and you don't have you don't have a lot of space, you don't have a lot of money. Um, and and it's relatively cheap and nutritious and then you end up with a 14 day supply and it's relatively portable. Um, part of the other aspects of this program, it takes into to account supplements. Make sure that you have vitamins on hand because food storage, living out of a food storage, you might miss a few of the vitamins that you need. And it's just important to, especially in children, to make sure that they have the vitamins that they need to stay healthy. And you don't want to have a vitamin C deficiency or have to deal with scurvy or anything like that if it could be avoided. Um, this program also has some ideas on, on how to cook without power, how to, uh, how to handle picky eaters, which is really critically important. You want to make sure that that if you have somebody with allergies or that has challenges eating certain type of foods, um, that that they're going to be able to eat. Now, if, if someone's incredibly picky and and very uh, spoiled or or used to certain things, now may be the right time to start changing your family. Even one week, one day a week, having some different meals. Um, out of food storage and out of food storage type foods to prepare people for living out of food storage. Um, keep in mind al alternative cooking safety. Um, if you're dealing with fire, 
other things like that you, and you've never cooked with fire it, there is there's always risk of of burns and and fire and fire spreading so can and the other thing that some people don't consider is is fire burns a lot of oxygen and produces um poisonous gases so we want to make sure that they were well ventilated and and people aren't suffocating in emergency situations conserve the fuel and resources that you do have um start doing that now turn off light switches when you don't need them um you know turn things on and off so that you're not just going through so much water uh get used to doing it now it won't be so much of a a jump in an emergency situation you know, a lot of us just let the the water run while you're washing brushing your teeth and things like that you know just consider different ways what would you change if you had uh you know only one gallon of water to to live off of per person per day um Consider the basics. Learn to cook from scratch. If you if you did and, and have not done it in a while, pick it up. If you've never done it, um, do start picking it up. You get better with time. Um, gradually increase your skills every day, every week, every month. It's it's not a sprint. It's it's kind of a marathon. Um, gradually increase the variety in your food storage as well. It's critically important in emergencies that you have some comfort food. So consider a Hershey bar, cocoa, different things like that, that on occasion can be brought out and said, oh, there's a there's a nice uh, happy moment that it just breaks the monotony of eating spaghetti every day or whatever it is that you have stocked up, but mostly <clears throat> cover your basic nutrition and buy what you'll eat. All right, let's see here. Now, in this program, they cover what's called a basic box. And within this basic box, they have how much calories is, is stored in the box and protein and fiber. But also, it's got some recipe cards and some some implements to help cook and, and other things. And this is great if you want to assemble some boxes in different locations <coughs> or even, you know, have barter boxes or 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 just building and building your storage in general, you know, each box doesn't have to look exactly the same, but can contain a, a set of meals. And one could be a breakfast box or one could be a dinner box. It, it really just depends on, on what your family goes through, but it, it you'll end up with a, a basic cost for box. And, and it's very achievable if you break it down that way. So consider that if you you again if you break things down into achievable slices no matter what type of food storage program you use it makes it a lot easier another food storage program we're going to talk about is a, a food storage in the in the home program um this one was originally done in in july of 1995 and, and there's several versions since but I, I like this version um and it's pretty simple and not not terribly large but it, it basically covers the the simple basics uh, if you've never had a program but want to do something a little bit more complex than um, just the build to programs and things that we've already just discussed, this is a good next step on on getting more into thinking about food storage. Um, you know, who should have a food storage? Why have it? What to store? Um, goes into the food pyramid. Um, here it covers... You know, obviously families could store homesteads. It also covers some common sense things to think about. Like on our homestead, we have a variety of different animals and they have uh, quite a quite a lot of feed that they go through. So we need to make sure that we have feed on on hand to to keep our animals fed um, through seasons. Now, farmers usually are fairly resilient and bounce back pretty quick in emergencies. However, um, it's going to take us a while to find new sources of food um, from within you know, our farming community when there's disruptions. Uh, so consider not only livestock, but pets uh, as well. Um, consider all the things that you might need. Schools, churches, businesses, um, clubs, anybody who consumes nutrition to live, anybody can have a food storage program. And the more places that you have it, um, the, the more resilient you are. You never know where you're going to be when you have an emergency. So, um, you know, emergencies happen. Disasters are frequent. We have a lot of hurricane challenges lately. Um, civil disorder is a continuous threat, especially around our election that comes up. Um, a full 40 percent of our population believes that there's going to be civil disorder before we even make it to an inauguration, regardless of who 
uh, is elected. Uh, we're on the brink of economic collapse in our own nation. The the dollar is not as stable as it it once was, and we have an incredible amount of debt that, and it's you know we don't know how we're going to pay it back. We've also experienced supply chains that have failed, especially during COVID and the aftermath. Um, we had periods of time where there were so many ships they couldn't get into port and periods of time when there was no shipping going on at all because nobody's ordering anything and everything's closed. So it, it's it, it, the world is always changing, and especially lately. And supply chains are very, very frail. China right now is going through uh, their own Great Depression style of, of economic collapse. And uh, China is incredibly important, at least to the the plastic toys that everything is produced. Um, and, and, you know, it affects us as well. Governments also fall. There's not a singular single government that's that's made it through all of history. And I don't think that we should be naive enough to think that ours is invulnerable. So what should you have and what 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 should your storage have? And, and I'd like you to start considering not just food storage. It is a, a whole business storage. And this this means everything from water collection and filtration um, food and food variety, um, food balance. You know, if you just have a lot of beans, you you probably have a lot of fiber, but you have a lot of other challenges as as well. If you just simply have nothing but canned food, um, do you have any can openers? Uh, do you have enough can openers? I don't know about you, but it seems like can openers break after about two or three cans nowadays. So make sure that that you have plenty of ways to get into the food that you have. Food moderation is important. Um, if you find things that are just on sale and that's all you stock up on, you may find that you are way out of balance on, on your food storage. You may have tons of, of carbs, but nothing to go with it or no gravies. And you, maybe you have tons of gravy, but nothing to go with it. So consider that um, you want a good balance. You you want your, your place to look like a general store or your food storage. Food nutrition is always important. Keep calorie counts and and you make sure that things have, have vitamins in them. You're not just buying empty calories. Everything you need to sustain life, comfort, and rebuilding should be in your storage. So the food guide pyramid, I'm going to make use of this and, and explain it. So we understand that the food guide pyramid was was implemented during a, a period of time of economic uncertainty in our countries when and this is a cheap way of living and a cheap way of, of getting the, the nutrients that you need to sustain life however long term a lot of studies have come out since then that this this is not necessarily a completely healthy way of living long term and so i don't want to get into the ins and outs of that but i think it's important for us to to understand that the food the food pyramid is important when it comes to food storage in especially when there's economic considerations uh, that that you're that you're dealing with now if you're on a keto plan and you've got five freezers and tons of batteries and generators and gasoline and you're all ready for that that that's okay but that's not practical for a lot of people and if you're looking for the most bang for your buck in food storage, the food guide pyramid is still where it's at as far as how to keep your family alive through whatever challenge you're going to need and until you can at least start um, building more protein into your life. Now, designing your your emergency storage, consider consider your capacity to store. And, and what I mean by that is some people have apartments, but go ahead and, and buy a, a huge, huge food storage, um, you know, spend thousands of dollars on all these containers. It's a great, efficient way of doing it space-wise. However, they still have pails and pails and pails, plastic pails all over the place. And it needs to be properly stored. Now, if this apartment gets hot and or gets very cold or wherever it is that they're stored, then then that reduces the the life of that um that food that you've stored so if you if you don't have the ability to store it then please don't store it or don't even buy it because you're just wasting your money consider your emergency storage conditions if if you're prone to flooding um it's may not be smart to have a basement and have all your food in your basement um if you're prone to, to hurricanes or or those sort of things you want to might want to have a a hardened storage facility on your place that that's where you store your things um, 
tornado, same things. Maybe you have a root cellar that or a storm shelter that is designed, and, and that's where you want to make sure that some of your emergency things are. Consider that you, you have a place to store it. Um, be mindful of ways to back up your storage. If you... And what I mean by that is if you have a freezer full of meat that is part of your storage and you have a generator and about a week's worth of fuel, then make sure that you have pots, pans, and canning things so that if you need to, you can can what's left in that freezer in case the power is not going to come up so that you don't lose that food storage. Uh, find ways to back up your food storage in every way you can so that if things start going one way, you, you don't lose your whole food storage. And always seek to increase your storage capacity. So starting your food storage is always the hardest thing that people do. It, it's expensive to even eat right now. It's an impossibility. And, and the first thing is, is to change your mind about how you're going to do it. You're always going to want to stay in business and you're always going to want to feed your, your family and you're already in business now. So to not have a food storage is making a decision to not stay in business when, when times go bad and not feed your family. And I don't think that's a recipe for success that any one of us want. So make the decision to work on your food storage. And then it's just going to be part of your life. It's going to be part of your preparedness. It's going to be part of your gardening. You'll buy seeds, you know, things to put back, extra tools. Your your mind is to always keep the store open and increase its its availability of fresh fresh foods. Take care of your perishable items. Um, they perish, and so they need to be rotated. Ensure that you're using and, and eating out of your food storage. Your food storage should be your personal grocery store, and you should be eating out of it. And when you go to the grocery store, you go to resupply your personal grocery, grocery store, not to just get stuff to eat. Making that single decision change and change of attitude will instantly... Uh, it, just start, you know, start having a food store. It's just by changing your attitudes. So when you go to purchase things, um, double purchase, at least if you're going to make spaghetti dinner for the family, then go up and purchase the stuff to make too. Um, freeze and preserve the things that you need to and put it away for, for a rainy day. Every time you go out to do something, just purchase something extra. And eventually you're going to, you're, you're going to make more food storage. Lump sum purchases whenever you come up to ex any extra money or just on regular schedules. Just decide that every every month or every so often you're going to spend $200 on bulk flour, bulk, bulk whatever your priorities are at the time. It could be beans, it could be rice. Just get your calories up there first, just making sure that you're having something rather than nothing. Um, and then, oh, as always, store things that you'll use. How much food to store? Well, it's it's an open-ended question because nobody knows how long a disaster will will happen. Most emergencies are over within within 30 days or so. However, as we've seen, it's taking longer and longer for quote unquote normal to resume. It's taking months for for places to resume and none of us are any illusion that that places in in the south right now because of the hurricanes are are going to be well they're going to be rebuilding at least for a year or two. So the longer that you can have some sense of stability the better. 18 to to, to 12 months is a great target. Um, ideally, remember, it takes two years for someone to completely come uh, to an adjustment to a new way of life. So if you fully expect that the whole world's going to collapse in one way or the other, then your goal should be two years. However, if you have 30 days food supply, you're well ahead of the game and, and well aware or ahead of your neighbors. Always keep in mind water, a minimum of one gallon per day and one um, per person is going to be needed in the emergency uh, situation. Don't forget your toilet paper and sanitary supplies. Don't forget the ladies. They have long-term needs. There's a lot of different ways for, for ladies long-term to take care of those needs. However, um, you know, everyone is different. But don't forget to make sure that you have um, the supplies for babies and ladies and, and the important people in your life. Um, also, ensure that medical needs are anticipated. If you have regular medications, um, try and get advanced supplies. There's a number of companies out there nowadays that can get you emergency supplies of antibiotics and whatnot. So take advantage of, of things while they're out there. Some considers about your emergency storage. Um, one, keep it above 32 and below 70. You want the middle ground there. 
you don't want things to get too hot. They start spoiling a lot faster. Same thing with too cold. Um, the more that you can keep it in a, a cool, dry place, the longer it's going to 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 stay. Um, I, I do say cool and I do say dry. Um, temperatures and, and moisture are the two things that can destroy food storage really quickly. Um, and so with that, you want to keep it clean and inspect it regularly. Make sure that moisture isn't coming in. Um, you want to do your best to protect against rodent and insects. No matter what you do, you shouldn't expect that they will be a problem because they may not be initially, but the pests always look for a way to, to get in there. So preventing things by storing things in uh, steel cans, old freezers, old refrigerators, uh, metal boxes, you know, just different ways to to keep rodents, insects, and things out of it. Um, there, there's a, a lot of different ways to do it on the cheap. Everyone's always throwing away old freezers, and we usually collect those up, and that becomes our dry storage for noodles and and whatnot. Um, it just kind of works because they they're fairly insulated uh, for, and and usually generally airtight, so it helps uh, preserve things a little bit longer. Um, so let's see here. Storage and and life. Um, everything deteriorates on some level. Now, some things you, there's been some can and preserve things that sunk on an old steamboat in the Mississippi and they dug it up and did tests and and sure enough, you could eat it and it even had nutritional value. But that was really stored under perfect conditions and and you know you could eat it a hundred years later. But when not stored in in perfectly preserved conditions. Um, then, then things deteriorate and deteriorate rapidly. So keep rotating your storage. And the way to do that is to eat out of your food storage. It's your personal grocery store. Keep it stocked and keep it, keep it, uh, keep it used. Um, make Can sure I that put in there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to let everybody know how we do it. So we have a list that we just printed off, like off Excel that it says, the date that we took something out of storage, like a can of beans, how many how many of that, whatever we took out, how many cans of beans we took out. Um, and then when we go to the store the next time to do our grocery shopping, we go grocery shopping once a month. When we go to the store, then we take that list with us and we say, okay, we used five cans of beans this month. We need to buy the 10 cans of beans because we buy double than what we used. And that's the way that we keep track of it. So we make sure to re restock um, what we what we used and to build. That's great. Um, and, and thanks for mentioning that, because that brings up a lot of things. It tells you what you're using and it also tells you what you're not using out of your food storage. And so you can go through your list and then you can look at your shelves and say, OK, well, these th this area here has not been touched. And that gives you a good good idea or inkling to try and work those items into next month's or next week's um, food planning so that you can start working on those and and tr start drawing those down and cycling uh, those out and keep your supplies fresh. So there's a lot of great uses for that list. And, and yeah, thanks for reminding me of how we do it because that's, that, that's, that's how we shop. We, we shop to resupply our, our store that, that feeds our home um, we don't necessarily just say, okay, um, I need to make this recipe. And if it's a new recipe, sure, we'll get the stuff at the store. But generally speaking, if it's something that we don't already have materials and recipe for, then, um, which isn't much, but then we'll go out and buy it. So, so thanks. Um, okay. So the things that affect storage life, um, packaging, of course, uh, affects it. Insects and rodents, um, will, will ruin your food storage in a heartbeat, Temperature, definitely, uh, it's, temperature definitely will do something. Uh, sorry, I should have turned my notifications off. Um, temperature will, will definitely affect it in a, in a negative way, especially if it's too hot and too cold. Um, the time always affects it. And light is another thing. There's, there's a lot of pro, uh, if everything exposed to light, um, deteriorates, some of your plastic, is designed to deteriorate in light and you can have if you have windows in a garage or something like that and 
those windows light on your plastic packaging. If you have a lot of water stored in those plastic, um, maybe old two liter bottles or something, then they deteriorate, then you could have a flood and ruin your whole thing. So consider how things are stored and that light can affect them as well. Humidity, um, moisture definitely affects it. So more than just food, we we did cover this a little bit, but make sure that you, cont you contain uh, sanitary things, not just for feminine hygiene, but sanitary for your home house. Can you clean your home? Um, you want to be able to continue doing laundry and doing the mirrors and, and keeping bacteria away from different areas. So you want to be able to continue to clean and in, in disaster areas, that's one of the things in, in the hurricane zones that you see is people really desperately needing cleaning supplies. So have, make sure that you have tons of cleaning supplies because you're definitely going to need them because that's how you keep you and your family safe against diseases is try and keep your, your cooking and cleaning areas clean. Um, light, heat, and fuel are all important for you being able to survive and thrive. You can have all the food in the world, but if you don't have anything to cook it, it really doesn't make it very effective. So make sure that you have ways to cook it and fuel if necessary, if, that, if that's what you need for cooking. Either way, you probably are going to need some fuel to keep warm and, and keep, you know, some way to maintain light because uh, especially in the wintertime, it gets dark early. So tools, basic tools like uh, Leatherman's tools, multi-tools, um, gardening tools, simple wrench sets, hammers, uh, little saws, hand tools, little things to repair things. Uh, basic tools that you will need in the garden or to work on your car, anything that you do regularly around your home or homestead, make sure that you have the necessarily tools to work with or without electricity to to help repair and keep your 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 home in shape. And with that, uh, you know, considering tarps and, and things to do emergency repairs, if there's leaks in the roof or a tree falls on the home, just try and anticipate disasters. Uh, if you have a lot of trees, make sure you have a chainsaw to to cut them down if they fall down and, and different things like that. Your your needs will change depending on where you live. Now, home security is, is one of the most critical things because if you have spent an entire lifetime saving up for a difficult time and you have had paid no attention to security, then those desperate people who have will come and march in, in, into your home and take what, what you have prepared for. So please ensure that that you you have a way to defend yourself and your family. But home security does isn't just defensive items. It is also making sure that you disperse the things that you have. You can, you know, there's there's ways to bury things, there's ways to stash things, there's ways to to hide things. So it, ensure that you disperse your valuable th things so that if you are robbed of one thing that you have some sort of backup to to make a transition. Don't forget about your automobile. You know, brakes need to be changed. Uh, wipers need to be changed. Oil needs to be changed. You know, a lot of things are, are are useful over time. And if you're going to be relying on your automobile for around your farm um, to, to keep things going, make sure that you, you have the essentials to keep your vehicle running. Now, those who are saying, well, what about gas? Well, look, you can have a gasifier and run a gasoline motor off of that. And it's done during the depression. So for those who neglect your motor and neglect or neglect your automobile and neglect a way to to keep it going then then that's up to you you can walk but there's there are ways to to ensure that you can prepare to stay mobile when needed and and you know the more you put into your preparedness the more you'll be ready for whatever happens um some person or some people who maybe have a a solar system and an electric car that might work for them you know there's lots of different things that may work depending on your situation and your setup. And as always, don't forget your medical, not just the medicines you need, but during emergency situations or disaster situations, there's always going to be injuries. There's going to be nails and broken boards, and slivers and, 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 you know, flooding and, and just tragedy. So make sure that you are prepared accordingly um, to be your own drugstore, to be your own first aid clinic, to be your own medical doctor, uh, there's a great book out there um, when there are no doctors um, and there's another one when there are no dentists and they're, they're great. You know, if, if you plan on being self-sufficient, they're, they're great online books that you can get for free. You can even order copies of them. And, and the more information that you have to cover all of your family's needs, 
these are things that should go into your emergency storage. So we're, we're trying not to think about it just as food storage, but I, we like to enter on food storage because that's how everyone comes through the door. But as we start expanding it, we start looking at your whole life storage, like your whole family storage. And that way you're, you're prepared on more, more terms than just simply food. All right. So in summary, this is going to wrap up phase one of our food storage class giving you a, a nice little highlight of what's involved. Each one of these um, programs, you know, for those who participate in the program, you're not only going to get the digital uh, digital additions so that you're going to have each one of these programs, but you're going to have the option um, for our members to, to have, we'll be able to print this for you and get this so that, that you can, it'll be produced and, and you won't, it, it's, I don't know, it's several hundred pages. So it's, it's an awful lot. You certainly can print it yourself and we will get those digital copies to those who signed up for the class. Um, but this is just the beginning. And um, let's see here. Anyone interested in a more comprehensive class? Um, we're going to offer to print, assemble and ship the survival food storage manual to those those members who are going to sign up for part two of the class and, and pay for that, um, which it's a more interactive and we're going to help you do a one-on-one a -on -one private, uh, be able to work with you and your specific needs on, on how to get you started. If you're already there, what to look at um, and just work more one-on-one -on -one and, and in a more closed format to where you can feel comfortable asking some questions um, we don't want to get too much people's personal information out there as far as who's working on a food storage, who's not. Um, you know, some people get really, um, really closed about this and, and you should, you know, keep your your information close to you. But uh, again, we want to thank you for for participating in this and we hope that you find it useful. I'm going to ask Leslie if anyone submitted any questions No, not yet. Um, but do you want to give out the pricing? Oh yeah, go ahead. You you if you if you have it in front of you, go ahead and give it out. So, second. All right. So, for part two of the class, if you wanted to just take the class, it's forty nine dollars. Um. If you wanted um, just to get the book um, printed and mailed to you, uh, it would be $79. If you wanted to take the part two and get the book, it's, it's $99 total. So those are the three ways for us to be able to help you move on. All right, and we will get a, a comment on this video pinned uh, with that and how to sign up in the Independent American Patriots, how to join our organization. Either way, if you want access to, um, if you're a member and you want access to all the um, all of these, we will give them to you free, the digital side of that, so that you can have those and have this information. We have a wealth of information. The book also has other things like uh, tips on how to cook without power, survival tips, so the, the food storage book itself is actually designed to go with your food storage wherever it may be so that in the event of catastrophe, you could pull open this book and say, how do I purify water? How do I cook with the sun? How do I um, get food food safety in wilderness cooking? You know, this book has a lot more information other than than food storage as well that we throw in. Although the digital edition doesn't necessarily have all that, it does have the complete food programs that we have and is uh, a valuable resource nonetheless. So either way, if you if you um, if you want to sign up for the second food class, you're you're um, certainly going to get all the digital editions no matter what. But if you want us to print, um, take the time to print out a manual and get it all hole punched and put together and tabbed out and, and make it all searchable, then we'll take the time to do that. Um, and again, that's $79, but if you just want to go to the class and do the book, um, I forget, uh, we'll put the, we'll put the prices in the, the, in a pinned comment and go from there. 
But uh, again, I, I thank you very much for attending this section of the food class. I hope you've gotten something out of it. We, we're switching to doing things that we, we think that people might find interesting and necessary to prepare for challenging times ahead. And we're, we're out there to, to do some good and, and help you out. And we hope that you found some value in this. And again, you can follow us and check us out at, um, at independentamericanpatriots.org. And we certainly look forward to, to um, hearing from you in the future. Well, I will go ahead and end this then. She might be dealing with our children at the time. So thank you guys for participating. We will have this available on the YouTube channel. You can go ahead and watch that. And we thank you for your participation. God bless you. And God bless all of those who stand for liberty and freedom. And again, follow us at independentamericanpatriots.org.